The Mountain by Hawken. Okay, so September 2013, and well, 2013 in general, have definitely are shaping up to be quite a big month and year for uh, for progressive metal. Um, I just covered the new Dream Theater album that's due out in a couple of days. I covered Queen's Right Behind Me, like both versions of them. Uh, Fate's Warning is a new album that's coming out, and now here we are with Hawkins' third album. That's right, um, this band's been pretty productive. Um, they released their first album in like 2009 or 2010, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, which was Aquarius, then they released Visions back in 2011, which made my top 10 list. And now, here we are with The Mountain, their third album here in 2013. So the album starts off with a much lighter and shorter note as uh, compared with the previous albums. It's like uh, the opening starts off, um, it, it's like it gets shorter and shorter. Like the first album, Aquarius, you saw like a huge 11 minute and a half epic. Um, then on the next album, you have like a four minute heavy little number. Now with this album, you have like a two and a half minute uh, piano interlude, so to speak, with some beautiful and melodic vocals. And um, that continues into the next song, Atlas Stone, which basically goes off of um, the same note that um, the, the path um, kicks everything off with. As you listen to this album, you notice that this album actually has a slightly uh, more raw sound compared to the uh, previous two albums. Um, I would say that's uh, probably because um, I think maybe they took even more of like those 1970s influences that make their music very like whimsical and uh, jointy, so to speak. Um, I'm not, uh, of course, uh, these 1970s elements that you've heard from Genesis, Queen, Yes, and all that, you've heard those off of, um, the previous two albums, of course, but I think, um, this album's probably even more diverse in, uh, how it, um, uh, takes those influences, and the production itself, um, I mean, while it's not sounding like Opeth's Heritage or anything like that, this is still very much like a prog metal record. I'd say it's more influenced by those 1970s influences than before. Um, before, they definitely had a lot more focus on, like, the metal aspect with a lot of those early 70s influences thrown in, but I think there's... Even though this is definitely quite a heavy record, of course, um, I think they take even more of those uh, 70s influences and diversify them throughout the album's tracks. I mean, you get songs like Cockroach King, which um, right when you hear the like the actual title, you very much think Queen. And um, you actually all watch the uh, music video, which is so much fun. Um, I guess it actually shows the band members in like Muppet form. And when you first uh, see them on screen, I guess you get like an old fashioned vintage advertisement saying like ladies and gentlemen Hawkin or something like that kind of like you're about to watch the Muppets or something like that and you actually see them in Muppet form posing for uh, the uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody music video or like the Queen 2 album cover so that is that is actually really cool and uh, it beautifully calls back to uh, the reference that I made that uh, they definitely have a lot of Queen influence on this album um, and that it doesn't apply just to that song. I mean, the song after that, because it's there, actually has like a beautiful like a cappella section with um, them singing many vo vocal layers that remind me so much of Queen's early work. And it's just, it's beautifully rendered. It's very well done. Indeed, the uh, quirky and whimsical moments that you've heard off of a lot of like the early 1970s prog music that is featured on this album is part of what makes this album so fucking enjoyable and so frickin' good. Um, this is, uh, it makes it very engaging in the long run because uh, it feels less like a chore when uh, you're listening to it. It's not just technical metal just for the sake of it because uh, they're just making the new album. You can definitely tell these musicians are having a lot of fun with what they're doing um, while displaying like real serious technical musicianship which is very well done all around. Everybody in the band does a fantastic job 
really displaying their talents while also displaying emotion, displaying mood, themes, um, all these just great elements that you really need in order to make a great album. And many of these uh, 70s elements that you've heard from acts like Genesis, Yes, Queen, Kansas, and so forth, um, just put them all in a big giant boiling pot combined with Hawkins' signature touch, and voila, you get a really great album and that is less focused on just making the next album like oh yeah new album out let's just make it no they really want you to have fun because they're having fun I mean just look at the music video for this song I mean just it features the band members in Muppet form so obviously they're having a good time and that's great the two epics of this album like the songs that clock in over the 10 minute mark there's uh, two of them on this album uh, I really enjoy um, Paralai Dahlia, sorry, I can't pronounce it. Uh, it's the second to last track on the album. I really like the oriental nature of that song. It gives you the feeling of just going on an epic quest, searching for new horizons that uh, lie beyond the great vast desert or whatever. Um, yeah, great song, but I think the real highlight on this album, for me at least personally, is the, the longest song in the album, the 12 minute Falling Back to Earth. Um, if you really want, like, a true display of raw fucking talent and raw fucking emotion, uh, this song right here is definitely one for you to take home with you. Um, this is just, um, the band at, like, Pretty much for now, at the top of their game, they are really just showing off like the crazy jazz intricacies. They're really just uh, throwing everything on the table in terms of just mind-bending musicianship and beautiful melodies all around. Um, it's definitely quite a heavy song um, that focuses a lot on its um, um, just amazing musicianship and just crazy time signatures. Um, I think, uh, I can only think Pain and Salvation would be able to tackle these, um, in regards to just how crazy, like, the time signatures are. Um, I can, yeah, the only other band that I could think of that could do that is Pain and Salvation, which is just another great band that knows how to do it. They also have some very beautiful, clean passages, like, during the last half of the song, which, um, it's just a, a great display of technical musicianship and raw, like, emotion, melodies, and stuff like that. It's just a great combination. That's what makes this song such a big highlight that I um, highly recommend that everybody check out. I mean, listen to the whole album, but Falling Back to Earth is a personal highlight of mine, and I hope it's one for you, too, because I guarantee you'll really like this one. After the beautiful 9-minute ballad, Somebody, which closes off this album on a fantastic note, you actually get two bonus tracks with the uh, limited edition, which um, they definitely have some cool things to offer too. The Path Unbroken is like a short little like jazz instrumental, pretty somber and sad sounding. And you also have Nobody, which is like um, a shorter, softer, um, just edited version of Somebody. And probably, I mean, considering the uh, song titles are a bit different. Uh, and the the lyrics actually being pretty much the exact same. Maybe uh, they're singing this with a different uh, point of view in mind. They're just maybe they're talking about someone else, or um, maybe themselves, or something like that. I have a feeling that even though the lyrics are are the same, the song titles are different, which suggests a different um, person in mind in regards to the uh, lyrics themselves. All in all, I think this is a fantastic prog release. This is one to keep for sure. I'm probably going to have to give it about a 9 out of 10. And um, this could very well be my forerunner for album of the year. I've listened to so many great albums this year, but I think this one, for now, takes the cake in regards to diversity, just great musicianship, fantastic melodies, wonderful performances all around. This just has a great flow to it. Um, I can't really think of that many cons about it. Uh, in fact, yeah, no, I, I can't really. This is just, this is great. This is an awesome album. Um, this is, um, it has so many layers to it that you just all want to unpeel uh, bit by bit 
and uh, just return to over time, because this is one I'm definitely going to return to quite a bit. If you thought the first two albums were great, take a listen to this, because I think this one will definitely grow on you quite a bit. It's just great. I love this one. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see ya.